Hi guys, Blitza here, and welcome back to Arcanum. In the previous episode we were in Roseboro, in the inn. We killed the Vyron, Vyron, can't pronounce those words. We got the book at Sanane Horror Among the Dark Elves, now we're finally at Sanane. The city, home of the Dark Elves. So let's see if they're gonna give us a welcoming present, <laughs> welcoming gift. Oh dear, I wonder if they're gonna attack me alright or not. Ooh, suspicious, but not completely negative. I cannot help you, human. I'm here to see Men Gorod. You are aware of the procedure? Where is your amulet? Malachian, I don't have it with me. He narrows his eyes and looks you over. Don't ever return here without your amulet. Next time we will assume you are an imposter and kill you, dog. I'll just assume you are dead. They decided to take the calling me a dog was a mistake. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Just gonna keep chasing us. Pretty much what happens when you decide to be rude to Dota. And for no reason too. I mean I have to fight my way through the city now. I mean I could have gotten the Malachian thing, but then I'm like, why? Kill the other elves. Why wouldn't I do the same here? All well, because they're rude. This is why you shouldn't be an asshole, because you never know. And a person you'll encounter. <laughs> I guess no more talking. You win. <laughs> Seriously? Doesn't want to fight me. Fuck you, villager. Okay, smartasses, don't forget you're the ones who attacked me first and started talking shit. Holy shit, negative 82. Didn't think it was possible. Silly people. I am master at dodge. What do you think you're really going to do to me? Oh my. So it's just like a more messed up version of Kintaro. I mean, more brooding. Indeed. Oh, this person is not killing me. What do you want of me? I rarely speak with those of your kind. I'm sorry, madam. Why do you say such things? Pitiful creature. Why are you wasting my time with your drivel? 
You're obviously not fit to speak with me. Be gone! <laughs> Stupid. Again? What possible reason have you to waste my time? Is that alluring? What? Alluring? Is there something I've done to offend you? Pitiful creature! Why are you wasting my time with your drivel? You're obviously not fit to speak with me. Be gone! What if I say the same thing, Zanalurin? I thought we were beyond these things. Perhaps I will deign to speak with you for a moment or two. Consider yourself lucky. I really appreciate it, Zanalurin. Oh, that's her name. Do you have a moment? Yes. What do you need? I'll be leaving now. That is weird that she did. <laughs> Again? What possible pitiful creature? I think perhaps you're Why are you wasting my time? Um, perhaps you're right. I may have been a little hasty with my first impressions of you. Perhaps we might speak for a few moments. Yes? Ah, you've returned. Hmm? Huh? Suddenly she's like neutral. Greetings, Anna Loren. Might I impose you for a moment? Yes. <laughs> See? If you're friendly, let's as friendly. There's no need to be an obnoxious cunt. <laughs> Negative. 112. Oh shit, what, what did I tell them? Hi lady. <laughs> I have killed your master. Bye bye. Wait, seriously? Wow. That had nothing to do with me. Hmm, try to take her robe. Never mind, I don't want it. Thought it was gonna be something better. Tvaldor. So, what does this mean then? Maybe we'll learn something here. Dark Elf Garn, Dark Elf God, Garn. Well, she was like talking friendly. <laughs> Or is just to send, decided to attack me. Lol, I'm tiny, tiny Dota. Now, isn't that adorable? Dark Elf Noble. This is a note to Mingorad from Kanahoa. Guess so much for the talking part, eh? Standards escape from the void using the unfinished gate pushed our timetable back a fair amount. The dwarves are now being worked twice as hard to facilitate or facilitate the imminent return of Aranox. Please report on your progress in regards to the Van der Groth matter. We must destroy the device in order to ensure the success of our plan. So, what happens now? Huh. There's nothing to loot. Are you sure about that? Oh. I know who you are, the man before your thin Vari with gray 
wolfish eyes. He fingers a dagger in his belt. I'm sorry, what are you talking about? What do you mean? You are in the middle of the village of the Dark Elves and no one is here who shouldn't be here. So why wouldn't I know who you are? Yes, of course, sir. So sorry, sir. <laughs> Too late for that. Do you think that the hand doesn't know its own? Or the... He, he gave you a pointed look. Doesn't recognize its query? Or... No, it's not query, it's query. So, you do know who I am. Who are you? He bows slightly. I am Gideon Lair. Or Lair. Gideon. That's how people would probably say it in English. First blade of the Malokian hand. I have sought you for a lo long time. And here you are, having walked into my very arms. Interesting indeed. Ha! <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm curious. Why do the Malokian hand want to kill me? Why else? We are assassins, my friend. We have been can contracted to kill you. Is there anything else that need be said? But why? What did I do? Sadly, you've done nothing at all. The original contract was for a dwarf named Stenner Rockcutter, who was poisoning as a gnome when he boarded the IFS Zephyr. You spoke to the dwarf and so involved yourself in his affairs. We have been hunting you ever since. Why did the Dark Elves want to kill Sten or Rockcutter? That is not important to me. The Hand are assassins. We provide a service which we perform very well. And we are paid for that service upon completion of our contract. Nothing else is important, my friend. The Hand has no conscience or morality. We are death. The death has now come to you. I find that amusing. I've killed every one of your incompetent assassins. Gideon smiles thinly. Perhaps you'd like to try me then. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, friend. Well, what do you have to say for yourself now? Oops, I fucked up, right? Guess she's a lot stronger than I thought she would be. Yeah, pretty much. That's how it always ends for those who are randomly attacking Blitzer for no reason. Oh, they could have just half over it. Hi, lady. Hi, lady. <laughs> what the heck? I guess I killed everybody. So the arc dark elves are no more. Oh, shit. Where do I go now, I wonder? Oh, I still haven't found the cure for them. Not even sure where I would look for that. What do you need? Hello, Miss Misk. Miss Misk, can I have you a moment? Certainly. Wait, seriously? This must be a lonely time. Perhaps I could uh, comfort you? She looks at you a little surprised. Excuse me, madam. I mean no offense, but I am in mourning. I must say, you'd not be... You'd not be my usual preference. I see. Then I'll take my leave of you. <laughs> That's not... Depends what you mean by comforting. I'd like to talk with you about the Book of Durin's Truth. What is he? Is I see? Is it for sale? Gotta fix my scars. Best go to her. Sewer system. All right, guys. It's time you told me everything. Everything you know, and if you don't know anything, you will know. Mm. What? I thought I'd asked this already. Of course, I am Alexander Hayek, acolyte here in the first Panari Temple. I met before you as tall and broad with a chiseled planar or planar. Features a heavy brow or brow and kind eyes. His hands are huge and heavily calloused. Beneath his robes, scarred forearms like those of a warrior. Also, I guess I never met him. Greetings, Alexander. May I ask you a few questions? Oh, of course. What can you tell me of the Panari Church? What would you like to know? The 
What do the Panari believe in? The Panari and their beliefs are centered around the life and the teachings of Nasruddin. Throughout his life and in the years since his passing, there has been much written about him by those who knew him, as well as by learned men who have studied him, studied his life. But can you tell me about Nasruddin? What would you like to know about him? Who was he? Nasruddin was a very powerful and wise elf who lived during the Age of Legends. As the leader of the Elven Council, Nasruddin was both the physical and spiritual leader of all the lands of Arcanum. 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 Mm. For 1,000 years, he ruled over the council, and the land prospered, and all was well. What happened? The coming of Aranox heralded the end of an age for Ar Arcanum. From the disbanding of the Elven Council to the death of our beloved Nasruddin. Who is this Aranox fellow? Aranox was an elf on the original Elven Council during the Age of Legends. According to the histories, Aranox was a very evil elf. He had personal interest in gaining control of the Council and using it for his own dark ends. Aranox thought that not only should elves rule, but that they should subjugate the other races. Nasruddin came to our defense. Where is he now? Aranox was banished by the by Nasruddin and the council for after a large battle near the ring of Brogdar, Brodgar. Aranox had waged war against the council. It is speculated that he had tried to wrest control of the council from Nasruddin for his own purposes. Nasruddin died from runes he received in that battle. You say he was banished, what does that mean? When someone is banished, they are sent to what is known as the Void. And that Void, what is it? Well, my friend, that is an area of some debate. Many say that the Void is an actual place, a plane of existence where the evil pay for the transgressions for all eternity. Others say that the Void is merely a state of unbeing, not an actual place. What is known is that when someone is banished, they are no longer here and they cannot come back. How is that any different from death? Death is proven through magic is sometimes a temporary state. Entities can be resurrected. There is no resurrection from the void. Banishment was a permanent solution. Punishment of the highest degree. It's never done it anymore. There are those who believe the knowledge of how to, to do so has been lost forever. A few more, a few more questions about Aranox. Has anyone else ever been banished? Yes, others have been banished over the centuries. The Archeon actually names four of them specifically. Gorgoth, the Bane of Cree, Kergon, or Kergon, and Krakatur. Of course, there were others, but these were the most infamous. Tell me of the Bane of Cree. The Bane of Cree was a normal warrior who was able to gather together near, literally all the ancient nomadic tribes and create a vicious army out of them. When his army descended on the city of Cree, he mercilessly killed every man, woman, and child that, that lived there. Nazruddin was forced to confront him and banish him single-handedly. Tell me of Kerrigan. Kerrigan was the very first mage to ever delve into the darker side of necromancy. The Elven Council, when they found out what he was doing, demanded that he cease his studies. He refused and they banished him. Isn't that that one Kerrigan? Who I was reading about or someone else? Tell me of Krakator. Krakator was a conniving, twisted monster, half man and half dragon. Well, that's interesting. Who terrorized cities and villages, killing their inhabitants and burning them to the ground. With the strength of a dragon, but the dark heart of a baseless man, he was evil beyond comparison. After a colossal battle, he was subdued and vanished. In the struggle, he lost an eye, which is on display in the offices of archaeology if you're interested. Tell me about Gorgoth. Gorgoth was a mindless beast with an insatiable, insatiable appetite. He cut a swath of destruction from one end of Arcanum to the other, laying waste to everything in his desperate hunt for food. He was finally captured by the council after a struggle which lasted for days, and with no other alternative it was decided that he be banished from Arcanum. What was the Elven Council? Elven Council was a group of elves who ruled Arcanum during the Age of Legends. It was made up of powerful elven mages and their leader was Nazarene. Together they oversaw the well-being of all the races. The council was disbanded soon after the death of Nazarene and they felt the time had passed. It was not for anyone to rule over all the races. Hmm. What do you mean by the Age of Legends? The Age of Legends refers to a time between 1500 and 1000 years ago. The Elven Council, to which Nazarene was the leader, was the central authority for all of the lands of Arcanum. 
It is referred to as the Age of Legends because much of what happened during the time is steeped in mythology and speculation. But we do know that magic was very prevalent at the time. Who else could I speak to concerning Panari history? There are many scholars here in the First Temple of the Panari. The two most learned are Hadrian, the church archaeologist, and Gunther Wilhelm, the church historian. Both are well versed in Panari history and have detailed information concerning their specific disciplines. Where might I find Alexander? Each of them have offices just to the doors behind me. When we're finished speaking, I will open the doors for you. I'll look into it. Okay. What happens if I say something else? What are the teachings of Nazareth? And the scriptures that you study? There are many writings we study, but the most important book in the Pinari religion is the Archeon. It is a collection of what are considered the most representative teachings of Nazareth, as well as some prophecies that were made in early years following his death. Where might I see a copy of Archeon? Archeon is just over there, the large book on the pedestal. Feel free to peruse its pages and gain what wisdom there is to be found. If you'd like to discuss anything, if you find confusing or unclear, I'd be happy to oblige you. Thank you, Alexander. A few more questions, Nazarudin. What is the essence? Nazarudin was an ardent believer in elven philosophy. Elves feel that everyone and everything have the rightful place in the world. And this reality is formed through the combined experience of all forms of life. Good and evil rarely play a part in how elves view the world. What might be considered evil? Evil, in the most basic terms, might be described as something that, which disallows the progression of the natural order. I suppose it's a great a area. But you might say it, evil is anything diametrically opposed to elven philosophy. To which I might say even those things have their place. Alexander smiles. It's said that single elven philosophical debates have spanned literal decades. You can see why. <laughs> That's... Meow. Yeah. Okay. Good day to you. Hello. And who might you be? The man in front of you is a wise and old gnome. With wildish gray hair and the beard three days grown, he looks up at you grinning toothlessly. <laughs> Call me Hadrian, acolyte of the Panari, and the local expert on church archaeology. How might I help you today? Greetings, I'm Lulu Lutz. Might I speak with you a moment? Certainly. Let's talk about your work. What would you like to know? Tell me about some of the objects you have here. Which one would you like to know? What is that black gem? That is the eye of Krakatur. Oh, really? It's a beautiful stone. No, I mean, it's really the eye of Krakatur. When the council was banishing him, him, he put up quite a struggle. Somehow the monster's eye got put out, and someone found it as they were cleaning up. Dreadful creature Krakatur was. If you ask Alexander about who's been banished over the years, he'll tell you the story. Perhaps I'll do that about the subjects. Are they for sale? No, no, these are priceless church artifacts. I couldn't part with them for worldly riches. Mm, let's talk about your work. What do you know about the remains of Nazareth? The remains of Nazareth? What would you like to know about them? Where are they? They are housed in the old catacombs beneath the temple. The first acolyte, Alexander, can direct you there if you have problems finding it. Have you seen them? His bro furrows. No, and I'd do anything to see those old bones of his. There are so many questions I could ask if I could only have a look at them. When he died, how he died, I want to know if his skeletal structure is the same as common elves, or if his prolonged use of powerful magics changed him somehow. Changed him somehow. So many questions, and I've never been able to see them. Why, Hadrian, you're the church archaeologist, surely you... Yes, you'd think so, wouldn't you, young lady? He raises from his seat, gesticulating to and fro. I mean, when the elders need someone to go digging in the dang caverns of the Bengalian deeps, who do they call upon? Or if some poor fool comes across the tomb sealed with a Gorgothian blood curse. Ring the bell for old Hadrian. Why would they let you see the remains, Hadrian? I have no idea. He throws his hands in the air, <laughs> upending a stack of papers what looks to be a cup of dark ale. <laughs> They speak of desecration and sacrilege, but he lowers his voice, leaning closer. The man is dead. D-E-A-D. I respect and cherish Nazareth and what he thought us more than anyone, but I hardly think he'd be upset if I chipped a piece of bone from his earthly shell. I see your point. I myself would love to take a look at them. Really? His face brightens. Are you a fellow archaeologist, my friend? 
No, but it's a long story. The living one, you? He pulls back, crossing his arms. I think that's in very poor taste. Do you have any idea what it is that you're proposing? Yes, I know it's hard to believe, but... You know, we were told to watch out for someone like you. The high priest said that there would be an imposter who would try to pass himself off as his living one. You're lucky I don't have you thrown in chains right now. Wait, Hadrian, this is important. I need your help. It looks like you conflicted. Look, please just leave. I couldn't help you see the remains in any case. If I've never seen them, they're certainly not going to let you. I see. Well, good day to you. Yes? Wait, yes? Listen, I don't know what to think anymore. I'm an old man and very set in my beliefs. It's much easier for me to think you a charlatan than to face the alternative. I understand, Hadrian, and I'm sorry. If the remains are what you seek, he takes a deep breath looking around, his voice lowers. You may want to wa wander around the local sewers. You never know what you'll find down there. Perhaps you could bring back whatever it is you come across. Perhaps you could bring it back for me to look at. I'll look around. If I find anything, I'll bring it back. You do that, my friend, he smiles. Is there anything else? Mm, I think that's all for now. Good day. Madam? Curious and who are you, sir? The thin man in front of you is very properly dressed. Instead of robes, he wears a finely made suit. A pair of thin gold spectacles lie across his nose. His features are delicate, but his eyes belie a strength of body and character, as well as harboring a fierce intelligence. He regards you intensely. You might... I am Wilhelm. Gunther Wilhelm. A pleasure, sir. What exactly do you do here? I'm the church historian. I have a variety of responsibilities here, from translations to document restorations, as well as authentication of literary finds. If it's written, and it has to do with the Pinari, it's my job to know about it. Does that answer your questions? Yes, and very well. Might I ask you a few questions? What is it you'd like to know? Tell me of some of your work. What about my work are you interested in? There's a statue in the courtyard. Who is that? The statue is of St. Maddox, one of the el early elders of the church. Why was he made a saint? St. Maddox was the only person, reputedly, he looks at you over his spectacles, to have ascended. That is, the spirit of Nazarene appeared and took his body directly from him this plane of existence to the next. You say repeatedly, Gunther, do you not believe? Gunther smiles at you. There is no doubt in my mind that Maddox was a very holy man. My belief in an inconclusive set of circumstances does not invalidate that fact, regardless of how that might reflect on my own faith. Fair enough. Were there any eyewitnesses to the event? There were two eyewitnesses to the ascension of Maddox. One was an elf named Rondar, and the other, what was his name? Kanhua, I believe. Their accounts of the incident were almost exactly the same, and both were beautifully written. A few more questions about... What did you want to know about St. Maddox? I guess I'll ask later. I must take a leave. What is it you'd like to know? Tell me of your work. What are you currently working on? The person some books on his desk. His movements are quick and precise. Currently, I'm doing some research on older translations of the Archeon. I have found, found some interesting discrepancies that I'm looking into. What is the Archeon? The Archeon, it is the collection of teachings and prophecies for the Pinar religion. If you haven't seen it already, there is a copy on display in the temple proper. Alexander the First Oculate can show you. I see, I see. You said there something about discrepancies? There are a few differences in some of the passages that I found in, the, in this earlier copy. I'll give you an example. The Archean we read today refers to our order as the Panari. The word Panari in the old tongue means light servant or follower. But in this older copy I'm studying, we are referred to as the Panrinus, which means defenders of the gate. Very odd, interesting. Was there anything else? A few minor things. I'm still working on the translations. Perhaps it's something we can speak later. We can speak of later. Hmm. Of course, a few more questions about your work. I have some questions about the remains of Nazareth and what would you like to know about them? What do you know about them? Me? I know very little about them save for the documents we have associated with their discovery and a few research documents about the sarcophagus itself. Hadrian and the archaeologist would like would have more information about the specifics. Do you think that they are authentic? He lowers his voice. To tell you the truth, I really don't know. I've done a lot of research into the engravings and the sarcophagus. Everything seems to be in order. It just seems to me that it's all very convenient. I mean, who buried him? We have no records of that. There's no doubt 
that an elf of his stature would have been given an elaborate burial. But who did it? We don't know. Do the church records say who discovered them? Yes, let me see. He pulls a weathered tome from the shelf. Ah, here we are. The elf's name was Kanahua. Wasn't the person who witnessed the ascension named Kanahua? Well, yes, it's at least the same name. Let me look at the years. The discovery of the remains happened within a few years of the ascension of St. Maddox. I never realized that, but you're correct. That very well might have been the same person. Don't you find that strange, perhaps a little convenient? Yeah, you're very curious about this whole affair, my friend. What is your real interest in this? It's a long tale. Tell him what happened. I see Gunther studies you a moment, calculating. You're telling me that you are the sole survivor of the IFS Zephyr Blim crash? Yes. Gunther is silent for a long while, then a slight smile comes over his face and he takes you, your hand in his. I was wondering when you were going to tell me. I've been looking for you for a long time, you know. The rumors abound and we heard you might come calling. I'm so very glad you decided to put your trust in me. Thank you, Gunther. <laughs> oh, I... Wasn't I supposed to meet this guy before, like a long time ago? I really need to see those remains. Listen, my friend, not everyone here is sympathetic to your cause. Hedry and the archaeologist is the one who you need to speak with. But be very careful, he's an old and loyal friend. But belief in you will come slowly for him. He will be the best source of information regarding their remains and how you might see them. I tread lightly, subterfuge might be necessary. I remember that, Gunther. Thank you for your help. No, well, thank you, my friend. Return here when you've... See the remains and tell me what you find. I might, I may be able to help you once you know what it is you're looking for. I will, Gunther. Goodbye. <laughs> Hold there. What business are you here? I was wondering where this door led to. This door leads to the tomb of Nazareth. I see. Might have to take a look. I'm sorry, but the only people besides church are allowed to see the remains of another brothers and sisters and pilgrimages. And we haven't seen one. It was a long time. Ah, uh, I'm a uh, pilgrim with myself just in, to see the remains. I'm sorry, but you don't wear the pilgrim doors and don't appreciate being lied to a stranger. Go ahead and be on your way. Good day to you. <laughs> uh oh, dark helps, eh? Well, well, well. What were Dark Elves doing here? Mm hmm? Why can't I take anything else from here? That's it. That seems a bit suspicious, don't you think? Like, what exactly are they guarding here? That was weird. Weird, not rude. Is this what they're talking about? Pilgrimage is not priest. Hmm? Weapons. They're probably gonna get super violent with me if I kill them, huh? <laughs> I mean, of course. I've been uncovering some strange things, Alexander, really? Tell him what Gunther told you about. So, Gunther discovered something about the name of the Pinari. Alexander seems unperturbed. That is strange, my friend, but it seems a fairly trivial thing. There are small differences in almost every translation. This was probably just an honest mistake. Goodbye. I already read this before. Whenever I go through the sewer system. Ew, stinky. Yeah, it's time to use another weapon. This shit keeps. It's not good for me either. I say either.
Um, okay. everywhere. Are you going the right way? Probably not. Where do I get the key then? Go to the catacombs. First, I'm gonna have to heal. Guess I'll worry about that in the next episode. Alright, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!